What's up YouTube, Jason here with Bite My Bits. Today I'm going to walk you through the simple steps of backing up your Plex data, then restoring or moving it to another computer. First, I need to start off with a few clarifications and disclosures. This video today will be covering data backup and restoration on Windows computers only. While some steps might be similar on other platforms, they can still be very different. Also, this is only for the data related to the Plex server itself, not the media. By data, I mean settings and configurations, media locations, poster arts, descriptions, library details, you know, things like that. It should be noted that if you are moving your server to another computer, you will of course need to move the media along with it, or you can configure network sharing so that your new server can access your old computer. Following these steps today will let you avoid having to do things like going through your library and selecting those poster arts again, or changing the sorting names, etc. So let's go ahead and get started. Before we actually start touching any files, you should know if you're planning on moving your server or just backing it up. I only mention this because if you are moving it, there is a different step to take before you back up all of your server settings. This step is disabling the option to automatically empty out your trash. If you're moving to either another server or changing the location of your media, then you will want to disable this so you don't lose any of your settings. So to do this, go into your Plex media server, go up to settings, click on server, and then on the side, click on library. From here, you'll see a checkbox next to empty trash automatically after every scan. Make sure it does not have a check mark in it, then click save changes. Now that that's out of the way, let's get started on your backup. The first thing you want to do is open up your computer or any file explorer window and head on over to your local app data folder by typing the percent sign with local app data, no spaces, all caps, and then another percent sign. Press enter. This will take you directly to where you need to go. I should note here that if you have manually changed your Plex data location to something like a separate drive or an SSD, then your Plex data will, be, will not be in this folder. But if you did that, then you probably already know where it is. For this next step, I will be using the default Windows Compressed Folder method because not everybody has or uses alternative programs like WinRare or 7-Zip. Also, I highly recommend you follow this step of compressing the files because there are a lot of them and it can take a long time to move around if you don't. So make sure that you see a folder here named Plex Media Server. Don't click into it, just make sure it's there. If it is, then right click in the white area somewhere and click Create a New Compressed Folder. You can name it something like Plex Data Backup. After, right click and hold the Plex Media Server folder and drag it on top of the new Compress folder, then drop it. Now you can select Copy Here. Depending on how much media you actually have, this copy process can take a long time. In the example here, I only loaded four demo videos and the file has over 100 megabytes of data, most of which are very small files. So if I were to try to just drag and drop this to an external drive, it would be a very slow process because each one of those small files takes longer to be prepared to copy than the actual copy process itself. Having them all in one small compressed file makes everything a lot easier and a lot faster to move around. Also, don't freak out if your data folder is much larger than this one here. I've seen some people with over 1500 movies and 30 TV shows that had data folders ranging in size from 15 to 20 gigabytes. So yeah, it can get kind of big. Okay, now that you have your Plex data saved inside your shiny new compressed folder, go ahead and move that folder to your desktop for temporary handling, then close the Explorer window. For this next step, we need to get into your systems registry editor. With Windows 10, all you have to do is click in this box and type regedit, no spaces. But in previous Windows versions, you might need to click onto the start button first to see the text box. Once inside your registry editor, you should see arrows to the left of a bunch of H key options. All you have to do is click on the arrow to expand it. So let's go ahead and click on the arrow next to H key current user. Then look for software, and then you should see a folder called Plex INC. You don't need to go any farther than this. All you have to do now is right click on the Plex Inc folder and select export. Direct the new file to your desktop and name it something like Plex Settings. As the name suggests, this is backing up all of the settings and configurations you've made inside your Plex server. 
Now you can close the registry editor and go to your desktop. From here, you'll want to package everything up to make it easy. So go ahead and move the new registry file into the compressed Plex data folder. This will keep everything in one location and make it easy to move around and or keep it backed up. The next step will be restoring your backed up data to the same locations that you saved them from. Keep in mind that restoring the data is very similar process whether you're moving the server or just recovering it. You always want to make sure that the latest Plex Media Server software version is already installed and ran for the first time. Then just go to your taskbar, right click on the Plex icon and select exit. This is crucial because we're going to be making some big changes and we can't have it running in the background while we do it. Now we have to get back to your app data folder. So as we did before, open up your computer explorer window and in the top type in the percent sign with local app data, no spaces, all caps, and then another percent sign, then press enter. Once inside, you should already see a folder named Plex Media Server. This is good. For the next step, I have to say that technically, per what Plex says you should do, you need to overwrite everything in here except the plugin subdirectory. Now, I've done this step many times by just deleting the entire Plex Media Server folder and replacing it with the files from my Compress folder, and I've never ran into any problems. The main thing that you need to focus on is that when you do extract them, that you do not extract them to the new folder name, like Plex Data Backup, for example. This just won't work right. You can just delete the end of the string here so it extracts everything correctly. Once done, do a quick check and make sure it has done it correctly. If so, you should now see your registry file at the bottom called plexsettings.reg. To install these settings, simply right click on the file and select merge. Confirm that you want to do this and you're all done. Pretty simple. Since you've already had this file backed up, you can also delete this one now. Okay, we've restored the Plex data and we've restored the Plex server settings. Now all you have to do is find the Plex media server program and run it. You can usually do this easily by typing Plex into the search slash run area. We're almost done. The last thing you want to do is make sure your library points to the correct locations of your media. Just go into Plex, then into library, click on settings, add folders, and check the location. If the media hasn't moved, then this won't really matter. If it has moved, then of course you'll want to change it here. If you do change it, it will automatically do a refresh and make sure everything is where it needs to be. If not, just make sure to refresh your libraries and make sure all is well. The best test is just to wait for it to complete and try to play a movie. As a side note, Plex does recommend adding the new locations first and then removing the old ones. But in my many moves and restorations, I've always gotten away with just editing the original ones. Oh, and before we finish up, after everything is working, don't forget to re-enable automatic trash cleanup in your settings. Well guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video or you found it useful, do me a favor, click the like button below. And if you want to hear more about Plex, make sure to subscribe.